the weather has officially gone crazy. To date, this hurricane season, the biggest impacts of a tropical system haven't occurred in Texas, definitely haven't happened in Louisiana, certainly not Florida, but California? Who had that on their hurricane season bingo card? What's going on guys? In today's video, we're going to break down Tropical Storm K. It's bringing heavy rain to Southern California. It's also helping to create some very strong winds, over 100 miles an hour in parts of the highest elevations of Southern California. Then I want to show you one of the more wild satellite images that you will ever see from California as well. Then we're going to hop on over to the other side of the country and talk about Category 2 Hurricane Earl. It's moving away from Bermuda, but will impact the U.S. East Coast in an indirect way. Also going to check in on three tropical waves swirling in the Atlantic. Stick around till the end for that. All right, this is something you certainly don't see every day. If you are tuning in from California or the desert southwest, post in the comments what you've seen over the past 24 hours. Certainly the wind has picked up a lot starting late last night and now for us on Friday morning, Tijuana, San Diego getting pounded with some of that heavy rain courtesy, you see the spiral there of Tropical Storm K. Now this storm is not going to make a landfall, it's going to hook down south of us in the Channel Islands, but it will continue to bring, help create anyway, the gusty winds that we are feeling and the very, very heavy rain that continues to fall in and around San Diego. This is just nuts. This is the Go 17 high-res image right on over Tropical Storm K, and you see the spiral there, the heavy cloud cover as a result of K over most of Southern California, getting into Los Angeles, into Long Beach. We showed you the heavy rain over San Diego, again, as that spiral continues just to the west of us, and Mexico, it's going to parallel the Mexican coastline. I'll show you the track in a second and then kind of button hook back down out into the Pacific. So again, not going to make landfall. Now, these winds that we are feeling, some of the extreme winds of over 100 miles an hour, those aren't directly related to K. The circulation around K is helping to create those winds. We have a major mountain wave event that is also occurring. It's as a result of K but it's not directly from K's winds, if that makes sense. So there's a couple of things coming into play to help create these extreme winds that we are feeling, especially in the mountain passes and on the higher peaks of Southern California. Here's this eye-popping satellite image that I wanted to show you here of both K alongside the big-time wildfire smoke that's going on in Northern California. Again, you see K here. These are all the clouds from what is Tropical Storm K, extending all the way up into Las Vegas, also into Bakersfield. But then this lighter film at the top of your screen here in Northern California into Western Nevada, those are from the big-time wildfires that are burning on the northern side of things. So you have the heavy rain and the cloud cover as a result of the tropical system. And then miles north... You had the clash of the wildfire smoke from the bad wildfires that are also burning in the state. I was just pulling up the track to show you guys that this is not going to make a landfall, but certainly K making its present felt. You see it's going to move away from us in California and Mexico, but it's causing issues. A new flash flood warning is issued. Now also reports of flash flooding going on. This report coming in at 2.02. This is Eastern Times. So this is going to be before noon local time pacific time this is from mountain spring california in imperial county that's where we had the flash flood warning initially law enforcement's reporting the giant rocks are down on interstate 8 near mountain spring so if you're driving in this direction again be careful because we are getting those extra reports of flash flooding we're seeing the ground truth here from these warnings that were in play and again, here is the new flash flood warning. Looking at this in real time here, this is going to go now until 4.15 local time. This is going to be a continuation here, an additional one for us in Imperial, Imperial County. That's where we are seeing the heaviest rain now with, uh, with more rain coming in. It looks like USGS stream gauges are indicating that the rise of the new river, new river is continuing again so we are getting this in real time alongside you this is just before noon 
local time, that's Pacific time if you're watching anywhere else other than Pacific time this afternoon. Before we get to the Atlantic side of things, I did want to thank all of the new subscribers and welcome everybody watching. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for finding us. We would love to have you along for the ride as we track all of the weather across the country in a non-clickbaity, non-hype kind of way. We would love to have you and love to always get your reports of what you are seeing. Please hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you on this weather community. So there is Hurricane Earl moving away from Bermuda. There is Hamilton. That shows you where the island of Bermuda is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, certainly moving away from the United States. Now, we do have plans this weekend to go to the beaches, really from New York all the way down to Florida. You're going to have issues with rip currents. I know it doesn't seem like a big deal, but all the time when we have these big, massive hurricanes out in the central Atlantic, we always see fatalities indirectly because people get caught in rip current. So again, please be careful if you're heading to the beaches all up and down the eastern seaboard because those rip current risks can be really high, courtesy of Earl there, that does continue to move away again from the U.S. and Bermuda. There is Earl's track from the National Hurricane Center, the official forecast, and it's expected to maintain its Category 2 intensity as we roll in through the rest of September 9th, that is 8 o'clock, that is Friday, and then also into Saturday. There you go at 8 a.m. for us on Saturday, September 10th. You see these white circles here. That represents its post-tropical transition to it, that losing its tropical characteristic, but it's still going to have huge wind even though it's not going to be considered a hurricane, look at this. 80 mile per hour winds it's expected to have as we get into late Saturday evening. As it gets close to parts of the Canadian Maritimes, still on the 12th of September, as it moves into the cooler waters, relatively speaking, of the North Atlantic, still 45 mile per hour post tropical storms. All right, so here is the wide view of the Atlantic Ocean. You can clearly see where Earl is on the top left-hand side of your screen. There is the eastern seaboard. Again, this is going to move up and out, but watch out for those rip currents again. This is the interesting thing to note. You see all those little yellow blobs or ovals on your screen? Those are the tropical waves highlighted by the National Hurricane Center for Development. We're going to start with the wave furthest away from Africa, kind of smack dab between the U.S. and Africa. This little blob of yellow used to be red. Red indicates that there is a high probability as designated by the National Hurricane Center for development. It has since gone to a low chance. That's that yellow oval on your screen. But the one thing I want to point out, you see this little swirl. That's where it's trying to get a uh, low level center so we can try to develop the thunderstorm activity around it is pretty much non-existent it just goes to show that even as we are rolling through the peak of hurricane season that the atlantic as a whole for the most part is still thankfully not very conducive to supporting widespread development the same can be said here as we take a closer look at the wave that is to the south. There's hardly anything going on. And there you have it. This is the water vapor imagery, and it tells the story. Again, you can clearly pick out where Earl is in that green and white color. That's where we have the moisture in the mid-levels of our atmosphere. Where it is yellow, orange, and red, that is the dry air. And you can kind of see those yellow ovals still. But there's so much yellow. There's so much dry air out there that it is going to be extremely difficult for any of these waves, again, in the short term, really in the next five days or so, to develop as they roll off into this atmosphere over the Atlantic that's still, thankfully, not conducive to supporting these waves in the main development region. Now, there is still a lot of hurricane season left to go. We have the rest of September. October can be a gnarly month again, especially in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. So not the time to completely write off the second half of the season by any means. But I just love to pass along the good news in the short term that we are going to make it through the middle of September with nothing impacting land in the Atlantic anyway. Of course, K still out on the West Coast, but not making the landfall. We're keeping our fingers crossed here as we roll through the middle of September. 
We have you covered on this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Love to have you in this community. Please let me know where you are watching from. And especially if you were in Bermuda last night as we got some of those gusty winds. It wasn't horrible for us. Or if you're on the west coast of California or west coast of Mexico, would love to know what you guys are seeing. If you can do so safely, be safe out there. We'll catch you next time.